All right, let's wrap up chapter 2.1. That's been a long chapter, and also talk about the best way to do your homework. Uh, some other quick notation, other notation for f prime includes dy over dx, d over dx y, d over dx f. We're not really multiplying here. Uh, we're just writing them next to each other saying d over dx works on y, or df over dx. Uh, or in physics, you might write a dot above uh, f dot or y dot. Um, we'll be using dy over dx a lot more in uh, chapter 3 and chapter 4, mostly chapter 4, um, also the end of chapter 2. Uh, but it's important to remember it's not really d times y over d times x. You can't just cancel the d's and be left with y over x. So you really have to write it dy over dx. dy itself means something more like delta y, the change in y. Uh, the Greek letter delta, by the way, if it's a capital delta, it's this triangle. And if it's a lowercase delta, it's like an O with a little curly hat on it, or curly tail up above. Um, you can think of dy over dx as basically the same thing as delta y over delta x, but there are some differences from a calculus point of view. So we'll be using dy over dx a lot more later. Um, let's talk about some good news about Desmos and derivatives. If I tell Desmos f of x equals x cubed, it will graph it. So I'll get a little x cubed like that. And then if I ask f prime of x, and I don't say equals anything, it will compute all those derivatives one by every point by every point, and I'll get a graph that looks like a parabola. Um, so isn't that good news that Desmos can do um, derivatives for you? Uh, the bad news is Desmos graphs it, but can't tell you the formula that matches that parabola. If you want software that can give you the formula for a derivative, Wolfram Alpha can do that. Lots of other things can too. Um, compare this to if you tell Desmos y equals x cubed, it'll graph it. But then if you say y prime, Desmos is all confused. You need to give a function a name before you can uh, take the derivative of it in Desmos. Um, so it's much better to use f of x equals something than y equals something. Um, other good news, Desmos also understands d over dx, f of x. That works just as well as f prime, and in some cases it works better than f prime. Uh, you might be wondering, how does Desmos graph this if it doesn't know the formula? It basically does the difference quotient repeatedly. Uh, it does it all behind the scenes. It uses a very small uh, delta x, like 10 to the negative 7th, maybe. Um, so that's some good news about Desmos. All right, let's talk about how to format the homework. Um, so what I want you to do for your homework is on one side of the paper, write what your work is, draw a big dividing line, and then do an evaluation of your work. You could call it a double check in cases where that's uh, useful. So let's say you had a problem like f of x equals x to the fifth at uh, c equals 2. And we're given a hint that f prime at 2 equals 5 times 16. And it wants us to uh, write the formula for the tangent line. So this would be given in the book. You don't have to copy it into your homework. It's not a bad idea to copy it, because then when you're looking through your homework and repracticing it uh, to get ready for uh, the um, quizzes or whatever, um, then you've got it all in one place. Uh, so I would start by writing the generic tangent line formula, L of x equals f of c plus f prime at c times x minus c. Um, and we know c equals 2, so then I can say l of x equals f of 2 plus f prime at 2 times x minus 2. And f of 2 would be 2 to the fifth. f prime at 2 is 5 times 16. And I'm not plugging anything else, so that's, that's my tangent line formula right there. I seem to be done. 
but how do I know that's right? Uh, especially if the answer isn't in the back of the book. Well, it's a good idea to um, graph it. So I would go to Desmos and I'd say f of x equals x to the fifth, c equals two, l of x equals f of two plus uh, five times 16 x minus two. And hopefully I would get a graph, uh, let's see, something like this. And if that works, then I'm happy. So this is L and this is F. And if that graph, if the line is actually tangent to the, uh, to the curve, then that shows that I probably did my work right. And I just go into the next problem. I draw a horizontal line. Uh, let me do another example problem here. Um, uh, this is actually number 25 from the textbook, so I'm kind of giving away the answer here, but really you should be able to do it by yourself. It's f of x equals e to the x. And the book says that x equals 2, really what it means is c equals 2. And we're supposed to approximate f prime using h equals 0 0.1 and write a tangent line formula so I could say f prime at 2 is approximately f at 2 plus h minus f at 2 over h and I know the definition of derivative would have h go to 0 but here we're just using h equals 0 0.1 so I can say this is f of 2.1 minus f of 2 over 0 0.1. If you plug that into Desmos, you get 7.771-ish. And then my tangent line formula would be L of x equals uh, e to the x plus 7.771-ish times x minus 2. Does that look good? Take a sec to think about that. No, I should not have an x here. What I should have is f of c which is e to the 2, not e to the x. c was defined to be 2, so it should be e to the 2 plus 7.771-ish times x minus 2. And then my evaluation well, I'd ask Desmos to graph e to the x. Looks something like that. Here I am at 2, and I would ask it to graph my L of x function. And hopefully they would end up, uh, this would be tangent to that, and I'd know I had done it right. So you do your work on the left half of the page, you do your evaluation on the right half of the page, and if this turns out to not turn, uh, not to show that things didn't work out, you just go and cross out whatever was needed and redo it and then do a new evaluation that hopefully shows that it's right.